This is an overview of the unlimited timeline widget for Elementor. It's a layout for your content in a timeline and as you scroll down the bullet points are going to have an active color and you can even connect this to different types of item based widgets to show the active image. Without no more further ado, let's jump in and get started. To get started, I'm going to search for the word timeline inside of the widgets pane and drag and drop the unlimited timeline widget into my Elementor canvas. What this widget does, it displays your content in a timeline format with an alternating layout. Bullet points that when you scroll down, the bullet points turn on as you scroll. So that's what the widget does. I'm going to show you how to take advantage of this and take you over all of the settings. So the first setting is, of course, to turn off the alternating layout. So if I turn off the alternating layout, I'm just going to have a regular timeline with bullets on the left side. If you want the bullets to be on the right side, maybe you have an RTL website, then you can also change that as well. Let's turn back the alternating layout. And as you can see that the direction right to left works also when uh, you're in alternating mode. So if I bring that back to left to right, the first bullet will be on the left side. So you have a lot of flexibility over here. The responsive breakpoint, that's for responsive mode. So if I'm going to turn over here responsive mode, you can see that it's not alternating anymore. If you want to keep it alternating, then you need to lower your responsive breakpoint to zero and then it's going to be always alternating. The problem with that is that it doesn't have much space and then maybe you're going to need to make everything a lot smaller. So that's about the responsive breakpoint. Hide last item line. This is for the last item over here. You can see the line is not showing. If you want that to show, you can just turn that to no and then that will show over here. I like to keep it off. And the most important thing over here is the icon because right now you can see there's nothing showing inside over here, but we have actually a lot of options for this. So the first option is for image. You can show instead of the regular icons that come in, inside of Elementor, you can show images. So you can put any image that you want over here per item. Each item will have its own image. Icon per item, that means that each item will have its own icon and you can edit this later on over here under items which I'll show in a second. Same icon for all that will make everyone have the same icon instead of needing to go one by one and change the icon specifically. Sometimes your use case might uh, be that you want the same icon for all. And we have an option for text. This option I really really like because it kind of lets you add more information inside over here. Right now it's empty, so let's uh, jump into the items. It's a good uh, time for me to show this. And over here it's split into three different tabs inside of each item. Let's jump into the icon one first. And this is the image we talked before, this is the icon we talked before, and this is the text. As you can see by default it's empty, but for example, I could write over here like 26 of May 2025. And then that text will show inside of the bullet point inside of the item. And of course, everything requires styling and adjusting, but that's the point over here. So this looks really, really awesome. And I think we're all set to go. Let's see over here in style what we have. We have an option for show overrides. So you can actually change the background color uh, specifically for each timeline item over here. And if you're not familiar with Elementor repeater fields, this means you can reorder the items over here. You can delete them. You can duplicate and you can add new items. To edit an item, of course, you click on the title and then you edit whatever you need. So we went over the icons tab, the style tab, and this tab is really, really simple. It's just the content tab. So over here, you have a title, a subtitle, a text, and a place for an image, which we don't see right now. So let's jump in over here into the layout part. 
and inside of the layout part you can turn on or off each part of the timeline item over here we have show title which is this over here right now the subtitle is not showing and we can show that actually before the title after the title or even after the text so it's just one more piece of information if you want to show the date over here that would be good to use the subtitle field let's turn that on actually maybe let's put that after the title just so we can see how that looks so here it is and you can design it however you want put whatever data you want inside let's turn on the image so we can see how that looks so if I turn on the image, you can see there's an image on top and we even have an option for a button for each item. So that's really, really useful as well. So it's actually really a layout for sort of content boxes that are usually ordered by a certain uh, timeline order. Uh, usually it's going to be by date, right? So that's the idea over here. And if you're going to populate this with posts, which I'll show in a minute, then you can also trigger a dynamic pop-up to show a quick view of the item by clicking the button. So that's kind of advanced stuff for advanced users, but that's how it works. Another cool feature is sequence animation. If you're familiar with unlimited elements, then you're probably familiar with this feature. So what this feature does, it animates the items in a sequence so if I'm going to change that to appear, you're going to see that they appear one by one, one after the other. And this animation occurs just once the user scrolls to it. So that's pretty cool. We have a lot of types of effects over here. You can adjust the effect exactly how you want. Really awesome stuff. The next part is for connected widget settings. This means that we can connect our timeline with another widget, which I'll show and after I change the source, I'm going to connect this to movie posters. So that's going to be really, really cool. So the next part is for changing the source. So over here, I'm going to change the source and I'm going to use the post source. Once I change the source to posts down here, I don't have the option for items, but this is coming from the post. So I need to determine my post query. What's really nice about this is that it supports custom post types. So if I'll scroll down over here, I'm going to populate this with a post type that's called movies. And I'm going to show all my movies over here, which is really, really cool. And if you want to start determining what data to show in each field, you need to go back to source and you can see that the title source is coming from the post title. But for subtitle, we don't have anything showing right now. For text source, we don't have anything showing right now. So you can start adding uh, data over here. So let's take the post content, for example, inside over here. And now you can see that it's showing that. So that's really, really long. And let's try instead of post content, post intro and see how that works out for us. So that's working really, really nicely. And let's see what we're going to put over here in post uh, subtitle. So in subtitle, I have an option. Let's try post term. And for the category, you can see that right now it's bringing in the category. So drama, comedy, drama, biography, stuff like that. Awesome. Let's jump back into general and I'm going to turn off alternating because I want them all to be in one side. This is looking good. And for the icon, I want a text source. So I'm going to go back into source and over here, I'm going to change the source. And this time I'm going to use a post meta field because I have all sorts of meta fields set up and I don't remember their names meta field that means a custom field so I'm gonna click over here show debug meta fields and what that's gonna do it's just gonna show uh, all of the meta fields that I have so I have the length of the movie the year of the movie 
the rating of the movie and even the director. So that's pretty awesome stuff. What I think I'm going to show inside of the icon is the year. So that's the icon text over here. And what you need to put over here is just the name of the meta field. So I'm going to write over here year. And now you can see that each movie is showing the year. Don't forget inside of link source to connect this to the post URL because otherwise that when people click on that button, it's not going to go to that specific URL. And you can see that's already changed down here. When I hover, you can see that right now it's going to the correct URL. Awesome. So this is looking really, really good. And now we're going to take this one step further and I'm going to add another column. So let's add a column. I'm gonna move that column to the left side and adjust the width over here. So this is looking good. And what I eventually want to do is I wanna have a movie poster over here that as I scroll down between the items, the movie poster is gonna be sticky and it's going to change to the correct poster from the right side over here as the active items change. So as I scroll down, when this turns black, I want to show the corresponding movie poster on the left side. Now to make something sticky over here, um, I think I'm, you can use an intersection, but I think because I have only one thing, then I don't need to. So let's use a carousel, one of our carousels. So let's say, I think I'm going to use, maybe let's use a post carousel. That will be the easiest way. Drag and drop that inside. And over here, instead of three items, which don't fit inside over here, I'm just going to show one item. And inside a layout, I'm going to start turning off or on uh, different parts. So we don't need the dots. We don't need this. We don't need the content as well. And I think we're going to have only an image left, which is what we wanted. Let's go into style, image. And instead of fixed height, I'm going to pick a ratio because I'm not sure you're acquainted with this, but movie posters have a ratio of two by three. So this is going to be that part, let's make it sticky. So to make it sticky, I need to go into advanced motion effects, sticky to the top. And now it's sticky, which is awesome. You can also add like sort of an offset if you want to. Let's say 20 pixels so it won't be so close to the top. And we need to change the source and turn off the auto plate. So over here, I'm going to turn off the autoplay option and I'm going to populate this with my movie poster. So I'm going to go into post query and choose the movie post type that I ch have chosen in my timeline. And you can see right now this movie is corresponding to this. And now what I want to do is that as I scroll down, this is going to change over here. To do that, we need to sync between the two widgets. So I'm going to go into the first widget, connected widget settings, and sync. Since I have only one design on this page, you can keep the sync group as one. Let's do the same thing for the title, the timeline, connected widget settings, turn on the sync, and set that to sync group one. Now, as I scroll down, you can see that when I'm going to scroll down to this part, this part is going to change. Really, really awesome stuff. To finish up this tutorial, I'm gonna go over some of the styling options. So let's just go into style and over here, we have an option for active and we can change actually the active color. So let's actually change the pointer to black once it's active. That will just give us another 
type of vi visualization that it's selected. And let's add a border. So I'm going to add a border over here. And it's going to be a left border, 5 pixels. And it's already black, so I don't need to change that. So that's also another indication that this is the active item. So we also have the background over here. We also have the pointer changing color. And we also added a border over here. So a lot of things are going on. Let's go into title, give this a bit of style. So our titles look even better. And the text, I think we can make darker to make it look better and maybe make that smaller. So let's go over here instead of 18 pixels and change it to 15. And I think that's starting to look pretty good. For the pointer, you can even change this, right? So you can change the space between the bullet point and the pointer. You can move the pointer down to vertically align over here. So you have a lot of flexibility. And to finalize testing over here, because sometimes in the back end, the sync is getting lost. I'm going to click update to save my page. And once it's saved, I'm going to jump into the front end view and I'm going to scroll down. You can see the sequence animation. And as I scroll, once this bullet point is going to change color, the poster over here has changed color. So really, really awesome stuff. I hope you have many ideas of how to take advantage of this. It's very, very flexible. I invite you to view the demo. I'm going to put a link to the demo in the, um, the description field. So you can just click on that, go to the demo. If you're familiar with unlimited elements, you know that each section has a copy button. You can just copy the whole section and paste that into your website without needing to configure everything from scratch. So. See you in the next video, right?